Welcome to Scotland, and the year is 1919. Hi guys, Peter Finch here and welcome down to another Under Par Passport episode and you join me here at the beautiful Glen Eagles and it's a very special event which is going on today. As you can see, I am dressed in the garb of yesteryear and that's because the Kings and the Queens course, they are celebrating their centenary having opened in 1919. So there's going to be lots of stuff going on on the course, there's going to be a chance to use some of these hickory clubs as well. First thing we're going to do this morning is head out and actually get some pictures done, uh, which should be interesting. Moving film, I'm okay with. Still images, we'll see. This guy's obviously got longer yeah. legs. Gonna move yep. Hand. yep. Wonder if this were like with the original photo as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the original 18th century landscape. <laughs> oh no, the painter had him positioned like this. <laughs> no, it's not even a silver. Just gives us another one. <laughs> wow. No, no, wow. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, that's not, is that not it? Hidden behind the bushes, there's a bunker over there, is there not? No. We try and line it up with the mountain in the back. Well, I was going to yeah. say, if we put it for once, it out. Oh, well, no, we it's can. Fine. Yeah. Because that's obviously where that old sandbox is, yeah, isn't exactly. it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll just go and swing hard just in case. I like to get out of the bunker, I'll be doing well. Took up half the uh, drill of the ball. Food and the loft on the wedge must be below 12 degrees. No but if you got a sand wedge or something like that, that's no, fine. No. Did you see 12? 12 degrees? No, that's hard. No, that's you must drive us 12 degrees. Yeah, it has to be more than 12. It gets a bit confusing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. The restriction must yeah, be a bit arrived and is in the building. <laughs> <laughs> for, one day, for one day only. I'm going to come back. So, it's playing the King's Course today. A bogey 80. Just still can't quite figure out. Apparently, it didn't have pars. So I got a five on the first, and it was a bogey five on the first. So it says bogey five. I got a five. So is that going to be a five for two, Stableford? I don't know. I can't quite figure it out. And just look at the names on these holes. Now they are proper. I can't wait to play the Kittle Kink. That's my, uh, or Blink Bonnie. I think they're the ones I'm most excited about. So the Kings and the Queens course is here. Uh, they are James Braid design, and this is quite typical of James Braid. So using the natural topography to shape what really nowadays is a hole that would not happen. So you hit off the tee, down into a dell, then up about a 60 foot bank where you can't see the pin, and then the pin is down behind there in a bowl. So, uh, we have the track man, and 
it's going to measure the drive and what we're going to do is we're going to do the total driving distance not just the carry but the total distance so if it's a low one and it keeps running perfect um, we will be using your competition ball because this is a hickory challenge ah. So the next secretary challenge will be at the par 3 11th, you'll have Martin on the tee, uh, so therefore you will play that hole with your hickory set, so we'll each give you a hickory set, you'll complete the par 3 11th with that hickory set, Martin will take your set to the 12th tee, and again those scores count towards your score. So, just had my first birdie of the day. I only took six holes and was backed up by quite a few double bogeys. Actually, only using six clubs is more difficult uh, than I remember. What I do remember, though, is absolutely loving this course, and that has remained the same. It's such a classic design. I don't know which one I prefer more out here in the Queens. Maybe this one. Maybe just this one. Yeah, we're gonna go in the halfway hut in a second, but it's time for the official review of the old golf fashion. So I got this flask when I actually arrived. Look how it shiny. And in here is a version of an old fashioned made with a single mop. I mean water. So the local water. The water around here is stunning. Just I give it a second opinion. <laughs> okay, this is part of your um, Game. So the score counts. You were playing the whole hole, complete hole with hickory shafted clubs. And uh, modern uh, clubs will be returned to you. Uh, you'll help me by me to come up the fairway if you don't mind. At the end of the hole, so you're going back a hundred years in time, exactly to the day when the course was first opened to the public. The design was agreed for James Braid to do it in 1913. But it took a long time to do these things and to build it without the help of JCBs and tractors. It was all done by hand, and it was open to play first in. 1918 when he played it with some of his kind of professional or semi-professional mates if you like and it was open to the public exactly a hundred years ago and you would have played with clubs very like this okay so you will be teeing off sand and we'll take a handful of sand over for you mr mcleod no plastic tees they weren't invented in 1919. selection is going to be a two iron a rustless two iron wow that is an absolute knife Look at that, from the top down, oh my word, should work out well. My dad had slugs that all said rustless, you know, because that, that was obviously a... St stainless steel wasn't invented back then, it was rustless. <laughs> In the bag. Going in the bag. Buy one, quick. Buy one, quick. Not bad. I think you make a very good classic caddy car. I try. <laughs> Let's have a look at the clubs. <laughs> See what we've been rocking on this hole. Uh, I. This is this is a wood of some description. It's got a wooden shaft. What? What kind of wood? Hickory. Three wood. Three wood. <laughs> No, hey, Billy did send me the thing of what the modern day equivalent oh, is of he? all of these, so I do actually have the answer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Go on then. <gasps> oh, oh, oh wow. yes. You're doing it this time, still that time, I think back then, I think you were right. I yeah, think yeah. it would have been over your shoulder. Over the shoulder, I think, yeah, yeah. Over your shoulder. That'll do. Days in contact, go. So we'll be doing a completely separate video on these clubs. I'm going to have an old versus new challenge and hopefully get that done tomorrow. But it's it's hard to explain just how different they look and feel when struck. 
I mean, I've just hit the green, so I <laughs> think, you know, maybe I was born in the wrong era. <laughs> you can tell by looking at me. I was obviously born in the wrong era. <laughs> So this hole is called Braid's Brawest, which is basically Braid's best. So it's considered one of James Braid's best ever hole designs. So it's a massively undulating fairway. It's got a valley in the middle. It's up to a raised green, which slopes from right to left. Bunkers everywhere. I think it's about 450 off the tee we've just played. It is a magnificent hole. And then obviously you've got this as the backdrop. It's a stunning, stunning hole. So this is quite a classic thing about braid courses, which I've seen before. So this bank just before the green, is basically angled from left to right. So everything kicks towards that bunker. But then when you get on the green, it actually slopes from right to left. And I've seen this, uh, I've seen this at a few of his courses now. And it's a fantastic design because if you're short and you kind of get it running, you can get away with it, but then obviously you bring danger in. But then if you go over the danger, then you've got a better chance of getting it close. It's great. That's what you got. <laughs> well, let you have a mulligan. Nice. There we go. Player. I think you need some lessons. So one thing I didn't quite understand about this place, uh, but I do now after yesterday, is the membership. So I've always seen Glen Eagles as just this amazing place to actually go on holiday pretty much but you forget there's actually a full-on membership which play here as well and actually spending some time with him yesterday was brilliant such friendly lovely people oh great strike go on oh no how good was that by the way have you, had you sound surprised Gave me the wrong club. <laughs> I'm sorry. One thing which I noticed this time around is how good the food's been. It was great the first time we came, but yesterday, certainly in the Stratton restaurant, it was superb. And it's been reopened three days and they've redone it in like an Art Deco style. And you had the flambe. How was that, the flambe stuff? Oh, that was incredible. That was pretty impressive. I think someone said to us today it was like a scene at a backdraft when they actually did it. And yeah, it was. It was pretty dramatic. It was a lean back away from the moment. Whoa. Nice. Oh, really nice. Another thing which surprises me about here is that we've been up three times now. It's our third trip and there's still dozens of activities that we've not actually done yet put into that the fact that this year is the Solheim Cup in September and it's somewhere that just keeps drawing me back so I mean the underpar passport videos is about 
visiting places which I think you guys will find interesting and which are special for some reason. And if somewhere keeps on getting you back in, has that pull, that's got to be something special. The first time we came here on the press release, the tagline was our glorious playground or the glorious playground. And I thought that was a bit grandiose before we came. I thought it was maybe a little bit over the top, but every time I come back, it just seems to be more like that. And I actually thought that before we came this year, I was like, yeah, we're going to the glorious playground, which I suppose that's, yeah, I suppose that's marketing working. So guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this little step back in time and this little look around Glen Eagles. I'm hopefully, definitely, be coming back here in September for the Solheim Cup. I'd absolutely love to experience that event, so we will see. But if you are ever coming past, and if you do fancy around here, there's these three courses. I like every single one of them, I've got to be honest. I'm not sure which one's my favorite now. And if you are new to the channel, guys, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button as well, and follow me on my other social media platforms, which are all linked in the description below. And head over to my Instagram as well if you do want to check out uh, a few of the stills and the of the outfit that I was wearing. It's, I was gonna say it's worth it, it's funny. It's funny for me, it's worth it for my memories. If you don't wanna look at pictures of me, it's all right, you don't have to. In fact, I probably feel more comfortable asking people not to look at pictures of me. Shall we drive home? Let's drive home. Let's go. See you soon.